Rob from Quick Release and Jonathan from Salomon. Um, they're going to be presenting on lost legacy treasures and they have some great images for you in their presentation. Over to you, gentlemen. Great. Uh, thanks very much for the introduction. Um, thanks very much, everyone, for joining today. Um, this is not going to be a technical presentation. It's more of an adventure story based on our reflections and uh, observations. Um, we're going to cover challenges, uh, change inertia, alternatives to change, and uh, also successful strategies. Um, but before we get started, I think it's a good time to introduce myself and my fellow adventurer. So here we are. My name's Rob Ferroni. I'm one of the founders at Quick Release. Um, I've been working with uh, legacy data for about 20 years now, um, and I'll hand over to my colleague, uh, Jonathan. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Jonathan Terry. I've been working at Salomon for almost 10 years. Uh, today, being active in the business process transformation. Uh, so let's see what happens when uh, outdoor sportswear meets uh, automotive industry. Uh, when we are trapped together with different skills and background, but with a shared mission. So Salomon has a legacy, a physical legacy. Uh, the guy you see is uh, George Salomon, the founder of uh, the company. And uh, he had the idea back in 1947 uh, from, uh, from moving to produce uh, saw blades to produce metal ski edges. Uh, so you can imagine then uh, that we have a physical heritage. And beside that, we created a lot of uh, legacy systems. Uh, what is a legacy system? Um, a legacy system is something you carry on uh, with you all the time, uh, something that you have on your, on your shoulder, uh, sometimes without even knowing that uh, you, you have it and what's in it, uh, or if you know it, how to deal with it. Uh, so uh, we can look at legacy systems from uh, different angles. Uh, are there liability, a burden, or uh, a source of opportunities? Uh, with Rob, we want to see it as a treasure. Uh, but as for all treasures, you, you must avoid some traps uh, to take the benefit. Uh, it's like a quest. Uh, so to start, you need to team up with experts. You need to be curious. Uh, you need to be able to cope with uh, risk. And all of that will help you overcome a path uh, full of pitfalls. Uh, you also need to face all the voice saying that you cannot succeed and that you won't succeed. So Rob, uh, what are the other challenges? Thank you, Jonathan. So obviously this is a famous scene from one of the Indiana Jones movies. Um, when we talk to uh, our, our customers, that obviously they're not being chased by boulders. Um, but they often describe their legacy systems as something that's weighing them down. Uh, it, it's something that they have to carry and it stops them from being more agile and um, holds them back. Uh, so the key challenge is really how you build and adapt on that legacy in order to uh, derive mobility and uh, create seamless connectivity, um, all with the uh, least amount of legwork. Um, one of the other challenges is that um, the clients talk about um, their legacy systems being inflexible um, and they're not adaptable and they're not up to the pace of uh, the modern world. In fact, um, many of the legacy systems were designed for technical people um, and it's not technology that was uh, for design people. So uh, the, the history is that first these systems were very much an IT focused thing. And over time, um, engineering and departments like finance got pulled in. And um, you know, finally, the, the creative types are being asked to engage with the enterprise architecture. Um, and although many of these creative types dress like they're from the 80s, uh, they don't want to use 80s tech. Um, so yeah, uh, new people in companies uh, don't necessarily like the old interface or the experience around legacy systems. Um, but uh, it's one of the first uh, thing that you see and that you interact with when you start in a company, when you onboard in a company. 
but the interface doesn't get better with time on its own, uh, just like wine does. So another challenge is that uh, you have people promoting uh, automating lacing systems uh, that can uh, be used completely aut automatically without uh, human actions, uh, just like in back, in back to the Future. Um, but sometimes you already have alternative solutions available uh, in the real world in your company uh, to combine new technologies and new ways of adding value to your legacy. Um, so, and one of other thing is that uh, legacy systems are not uh, new by definition, uh, and people assume that new is better, that new is more ergonomic. There is also a time element here. Uh, people don't know how it works in a detailed way, and companies lose the knowledge of how to run, uh, how to update systems over time, uh, and how to access data, and finally, just how to change when all those people are gone. One other risk, uh, which is a very good reason to, to, to change, uh, is if the security of your legacy systems uh, is, are not maintained, uh, if your systems are not uh, secured enough uh, in the world we are living in. So J Jonathan talked about making the change. So let, let's have a little look now at um, you know why it's so hard to change. Quite often, it's it's simply too daunting. Uh, you have a legacy system which is complex. You don't necessarily know where to start, um, and it, it's complex on many levels. So it, it's technically complex. It's complex from a business perspective, and you can even face resistance uh, from the team. Um, and we've seen many presentations here at um, PIPX, which talks about the challenges of implementing PLM. Um, and, you know, that's not easy, even when you start from a greenfield. Um, any IT team will tell you that uh, you have to be careful what you touch in the system. Um, OK, you might not be hit by uh, poisonous blow darts or fall into a pit of spikes, but if you um, stop the uh, production line because you've changed something in the system uh, which had unpredicted consequences, um, a, a pit of snakes is, is perhaps um, a better alternative. So a good, a good way to, to navigate uh, into the, the risk is to know the risk. So it's better to know uh, what you are going to, to deal with than not knowing. So thinking that you have a solid and strong castle and architecture, and uh, that in the background you have an unstable castle of cards as a foundation is very dangerous. Uh, so yeah, don't, don't forget that legacy systems is also uh, often closely linked to your company culture. And uh, another risk is that we are so used uh, to the things we know and the things we use uh, every day that we might not know what is critical till it's gone. Uh, crazy in the sense of uh, frightening things can happen if your shoe laces got eaten by a porcupine in, uh, during a backcountry hiking trip, for example. Now, um, I'm sure this is something that Emily can associate with, but um, you, you know, imagine uh, trying to uh, declutter your, your activewear wardrobe, and um, it's the same with data. If you're, if you're trying to um, replace a legacy system, you know, what data do you keep? Um, what data do you get rid of? Are you sure about that? And um, you, know, you open the, the door to your, your cellar or, or your loft, uh, or your wardrobe and you have a look and sometimes you think actually do you know what this is just too hard and uh, you shut the door again and uh, finally there's also the um, you know the issue that everyone is faced with um, and that's actually creating the business case um, to do the change in order to get the um, uh, uh, budget so what alternatives are there to um, changing over to um, a new system one alternative is like uh, looking at this bike, uh, would you use this uh, carbon uh, racing bike uh, to go shopping? Uh, but actually, it's what we do sometimes with the so-called legacy systems. Uh, we have racing power uh, that we can use, but what did, that is underused. Uh, so one of the alternatives is to first 
uh, train on your existing uh, systems and software and invest the right amount of time and money to make the most of your systems. Another example uh, from the real world is like uh, building or using what you do best. Uh, before to think buying a new fancy and appealing systems, you can explore new solutions uh, for example, using uh, APIs to connect your uh, existing system to external uh, modern solutions. It's a kind of uh, give your husband or wife a second chance. Uh, for example, uh, here the, uh, with Solomon, uh, we have uh, Rihanna wearing a 10-year-old Solomon shoe uh, that is becoming the most uh, fashionable shoe suddenly. Uh, but it's something from our closet that we just put back on the market. Another example for, for Salomon and, and Lacing Systems, uh, like combining the functions and adaptability of your legacy, uh, here traditional laces, uh, with safe and powerful uh, wire technology from paragliding. Uh, so Rob, do you have any other examples of technologies that can enhance our uh, legacy? So some of you may have seen the news announcement, um, I think it was uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday by a company called SuitX, which talks about um, bringing to the market the um, exoskeleton. So th there's a good example of, of taking um, something that, and um, giving it more power. And um, there's also the, you know, how do you change the uh, user interface so that you can take a legacy system and put something on top of it? Um, and actually make it more accessible, just like this um, arcade iPhone. So let, let's think about some um, transition strategies then. If you want to be successful, um, I think first and foremost, it's um, about you know getting the team on board. I think you've probably seen this cartoon on um, LinkedIn a few times. It, it, it's got to be strong leadership from the top, and you have to get the team involved. So the team have to have a voice. And they need to be. They need to understand why you're changing, and they need to understand that they're a part of the uh, change as well. And and also, it's uh, taking the time to understand the people that have been in the business for a long time, the people that understand the legacy systems, the people that love them, understand um, why they love them, and um, what they do that you perhaps don't know about. Paul might think also that uh, legacy systems are not as adaptable and flexible as, as uh, new, new systems. Here, here a good example uh, of uh, a discussion I had with my, grand, uh, my grandmother during the first lockdown. She was using Zoom and for the first time and she wanted to use Zoom to get in touch with us. So she was curious to use new technology and uh, we managed to do it. And, and at the end she said, uh, she just wanted to know how it works. So we created a connection between a legacy, an important legacy and new technologies. And uh, that's uh, very powerful and it's based on curiosity. So the curiosity needs also to be used uh, to spend time to understand uh, what the business uh, needs, uh, your business, because you know your business, and uh, do a gap analysis. Uh, so you need to have a team um, that spend time to look, uh, look on the map of what is existing. And uh, so how, how we do that? So we need to do it uh, with the precision of, uh, of a computer. So with a logic of uh, zero and ones, yes and no. And uh, the precision of a relay race where the, so you need a lot of investment to prepare the race. Uh, you can fail during training. Uh, you can try train, uh, you can try many times, uh, but you have a very limited space and time zone to pass on the relay. So training and failure are key uh, to be part, to be ready for the race day. Uh, Rob, how how could we also pass the the, the relay? Yes, yeah, so, I mean the, the, here's obviously a, a picture of uh, Jonathan and I um, after completing the first stage of one of our triathlons, and. Um, yeah, the, the, this picture is really trying to illustrate that in, in the same way that you, you make transitions in, in um, triathlons. You have to think about, okay, when, when do you switch over? Um, are you going to switch over at the start of a new project? Um, do you switch over one business at a time? Um, and there's there's many other ways of um, yeah uh, making making the transition. Um, it, it's important to say, I mean, this this might be you know the the 
um, best case scenario, a digital transformation machine, a, a, a system transformation machine, but this doesn't exist. It, it, it actually looks a bit more like this, where it's um, you know a marathon that you, uh, it's an endurance marathon, um, and you might find yourself kind of uh, crawling over the line. Yeah, so transformation, là, ceci n'est pas une pipe, uh, you might know that, and uh, ceci n'est pas une NFT. <laughs> Uh, so just to say that legacy and transformation or legacy is a form of art. Uh, you can make of it what you want. It's it's super technical, but it's also a highly creative process where you need uh, brain connections and you need a lot of human interface. So just before uh, Rob and I uh, ride off into the, the distance with the with all the treasures, uh, are there any questions? Thank you, gentlemen, for that very interesting presentation. I uh, loved the images that uh, you guys had. <laughs> um, so we've had a couple of questions that have come in. I'll just jump into the first one. So when you look at legacy data, how do you pinpoint where to start? Is it a set process or different for each set of data? You touched on sorting the wardrobe, but what was your process? I think it's it's important to like em embrace complexity and be exhaustive. And uh, everything that is not listed uh, won't, be, won't be on the map. So, and that's for sure. So you need to make sure that you will be exhaustive and that each and every data will be checked as uh, needed for the next stage or not? Yeah, to echo that, I'd, I'd say as well, it's important to get around the, the team, the people using the data, because um, you know there'll be a, a limit to what you know about what, the information and the systems, um, and something that you think is not valuable is is something that is critical to um, you know one of the people in the business that's adding value. Lovely, thank you. Um, how do you best go about building a business case to overhaul these huge sets of legacy data? You, you have to link it to um, a, a strategic enterprise, um, uh, yeah, uh, priority. So it, it's got to be somehow linked to something that's valuable to the business, whether it's um, creating the connect, uh, connected enterprise, uh, digital transformation, and not just digital transformation for the sake of digital transformation, but actually, you know, what is that going to deliver? What what new value is it going to unlock? Enterprise strategy uh, must be linked to uh, real life use case, so of the real people uh, asking questions like, uh, how do you access data? Do you need to clean data? And how much time do you spend doing that? And aggregating all the time spent to work on unclean, unclean data, not available data, uh, is a very good use case to move. Thank you. Um Jonathan, what resistance have you had in your own company in, in your own company um, when you have been modernizing systems? What, one, one of them is uh, like why do we need to change? And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to talk about something that doesn't exist today, mm -hmm. uh, but that uh, we think should exist based on what we know, based on what we have read, and based on uh, exchanging with people like uh, Rob and other industries. And uh, that's the that's one of the major uh, uh, like issue we have. And and the other one is like uh, hiding behind words like uh, digital transformation or uh, artificial intelligence. That's a kind of uh, very negative marketing for what you are trying to to build, uh, which is as I said something very exhaustive and very uh, time consuming and uh, every day every day work. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thanks. Um, and I've got a question that's coming for you, Rob. Um, I thought that Quick Release worked solely with automotive clients. Um, what has been the biggest difference working with an apparel industry when it comes to legacy? I mean, the, one of the biggest differences is, is, is everything is different. <laughs> so, yeah, it's um, it, yeah, it's been a re really uh, exciting uh, opportunity for us because um, you know we were we were learning how a new world works. And uh, joking aside, I mean, the, the I think the fundamentals of information flow 
is the same. And at the end of the day, you're always trying to get the right information to the right people, you know, the right format, at the right time to get the right outcomes. So, um, you know, I think I think you can take um, the logic of what we do and apply it to different industries. But um, yeah, the the Apparel one has been um, very uh, yeah very exciting, but a steep learning curve. Excellent, thank you. Um, so we hear a lot about when we're looking at modernizing legacy systems that you have to almost try and predict what the future space of your organization is going to be like to ensure that the technology that you're invested in now isn't redundant again in another sort of five to ten years. Um, Jonathan, in the apparel industry, you know, what are some of the drivers that you're seeing in how consumers want to interact with the apparel products that they use uh, and how is this impacting your digital transformation efforts? One of the projects we are working on is giving access to uh, more data uh, together with the product. So delivering a physical product together with digital experience and together with uh, met metadata, full set of data. For example, uh, maybe the best example is sustainability uh, index together with the product. And that's that's a huge driver of transformation and uh, it's a it's a good example because uh, the, the numbers the index that we will use will be the same for the consumer and the same for the people creating and designing the products so we'll be able directly from designing the product to make the decisions to to meet our uh, sustainability uh, targets Lovely, thank you. Um, so you guys mentioned in your presentation about keeping the team happy. And what we hear a lot about in our meetings is change management um, and getting your team on board is one of the biggest challenges with any sort of transformation or modernization project. Um, what would you guys say to people who are undergoing a modernization project um, and they need to put in sort of a change management strategy? Uh, yeah, I would say, I would say uh, a, neg uh, a negative feedback is better than no feedback. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, it's, uh, it's almost like designing a user experience. So uh, you put something on the market, you put a minimum viable product uh, and that, and from there you start building on it. And uh, if you have nothing to start uh, discussing around, uh, even if it's negative, but negative in the sense of, of uh, we can make it better, uh, then we have nothing to start. So we take everything, but we need to be able to uh, have those uh, feedbacks emerging. And then our role is to collect all the dots and then connect all the dots and all the needs. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thanks. And Rob, from your experience, what sort of advice would you give companies who are looking to start in their modernization projects? Yeah, I mean, from the organizational change perspective, it's about intimacy. Um, you know, you have to be close to the people in the business that are going to be affected by this change. There's no way around it. And, and the more time you invest up front with being close to people, the more open they're going to be, the more direct communication you're going to have. So invest up front and that will save um, downstream. Um, and um, yeah, the, the, you know, and then from the business, business perspective, you really just have to be focused on what, what is this going to deliver for the business? And this, you know, you have to have a, a solid uh, value case. And that that can't be enough just to get the thing moving. You actually have to then deliver on it and, and prove that that has happened. And, you know, if you've not delivered it, then um, you have to keep going until you deliver it. OK, excellent. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, for your presentation and for answering our questions here today. Um, it's very interesting. And thank you for everyone who sent in your questions to these two. Thanks again, Jonathan and Rob. Pleasure. Thanks very Thanks much for having us. Later.